Hello friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Lydia, the Halfling Seamstress, and let me tell you, this last week or so has been hot. Like, seriously hot. And when the weather gets uncomfortably hot, I find myself craving lightweight, flowy outfits that don't cling to my skin and make me feel gross. Looking at you, polyester stretch shirts. So for today's project, I made a skirt based off an 18th century petticoat. They are super easy to make and are great for a history-bounding homage to the 18th century without having to commit to the entire look and have room for super-sized tie-on pockets that were common in the era. Oh yeah, and I made it out of a cotton bedsheet so it's super lightweight and flowy. Now if you're not filming a YouTube video, you could easily make this skirt in a day. If you are filming a video like I was and have to wait for exactly the right lighting, it takes a few days to complete. But if you're looking for an easy project to start history bounding, this could be a good place to start. When you break it down, you've got two straight seams, some pleating, a waistband, and a hem. It's that easy. So let's get sewing. I found this cute floral bed sheet at the thrift store, and when I saw the IKEA duvet 18th century dresses on Instagram, my plans turned from cottagecore to history. These petticoats typically used to be 100 to 120 inches of fabric, depending on the waist measurement of the wearer and how full you wanted it to be. I went with the full 120 inches to get as much fullness as I could. I measured and cut two pieces 60 inches long. This allows for plenty of pleating, as well as a bit of overlap at the side seams. I trimmed off the serged edge at the top to avoid unnecessary bulk. Then I pinned together both side seams, right sides together. I also marked 10 inches down on both sides to make the edges that will overlap when tied together, as well as allow for potential pocket access later on. Then both sides get seamed together. Next up is the hem. You want to make sure you hem the skirt before you pleat it. Otherwise, you'll be trying to wrangle pleated fabric into a smooth hem, and that won't be fun for anyone. Since this is one long loop, I marked one inch up and pinned it down, then folded it up again by an inch and pinned that down, resulting in a two inch hem. Then I hand felt the hem. Depending on the level of historical accuracy you want, you could sew this entirely by hand or all by machine, top stitching the hem down. I went for a mixture of both. I then did a narrow hem on the edges of the slits at the waist. I also hemmed the side seams. Because one side was cut on the selvage, I didn't have to worry about turning the edges under, I just whipped them down. The other side did get folded under before being whipped down. Now comes the most challenging part, the part that gave me the biggest headache, pleating. Pleating involves math, and I hate math. In the end, I kind of just fiddled around and winged it until I was happy with the look and the waist length. For the front, I marked a couple inches out from the center and pleated under and away from the center. One thing to watch for is that as you pleat the skirt, it will get top heavy and want to slide around. If you're not pleating on a dress form, it can start wiggling and falling away from you and will affect how straight the pleats are, hence the mug to hold it down. For the back, I pleated over and in toward the center. It's a small change, but the differences in pleat style will affect how it drapes.
Once I was happy with my pleating situation, I stitched them down by machine to hold them all in place. I loved the little bit of accent piping on the sheet, so I decided to use it for the waistband. I trimmed a narrow seam allowance just below the piping, and tucked it under as I pinned my way around. Then I very sneakily top stitched over the existing top stitching to hold it in place. Historically accurate, it is not, but I think it looks cool. So there. I folded it into the wrong side of the fabric and felt it down. This kind of skirt is called an apron front because it closes with ties, like an apron. You need four ties in all, one for each side of the front and back. I folded in the little loose bits of waistband, tucked the end of the tape inside, and stitched it securely down. Now if you're not familiar with 18th century apron closing skirts, this may seem kind of confusing as to how exactly you do it up. It was to me when I first heard of it. So this is how you do it. Lay it out so you can step inside. The outward pleats go toward the front, the inward pleats at the back. It also helps to have the ties within handy reach. Take the back panel and tie those strings at the front, but a little off to the side. You want to keep the front waist area as free from bulk and bumps as possible. Then lift up the front panel and tie those ties at the back. You can leave them untucked or tuck them into the back of the waistband. It's up to you. So there we go an 18th century inspired maxi skirt, perfect for hot summer days. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you're already subscribed and haven't checked out my main channel page recently, you might want to. The Halfling Seamstress now has a banner and customized URL because ladies and gents, I've officially hit over 100 subscribers. A big thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. Here's to many more sewing adventures and internet friends.